Good evening, everyone, and thanks so much for joining us tonight. I'm Sophie Erber. Today, the Biden administration reopening the Obamacare enrollment period, or ACA, allowing millions of uninsured Americans to sign up for health insurance now through May. Our Washington correspondent Raquel Martin reports in our top story at five. This special enrollment period is starting now. From February 15th to May 15th, millions of uninsured Americans will have another chance to sign up for Affordable Care Act insurance. It's good if you need coverage to get it right away. Laura Packard, executive director of the nonprofit Get America Covered, says with the pandemic still roaring and millions out of work, it's vital Americans get the care they need. The research that I've seen uh, can show possibly permanent lung and heart changes to your body if you get sick with COVID. That's why the White House says it's reopened enrollment and is pouring millions of dollars into spreading the word. But looming in the background is the highly anticipated Supreme Court decision that could eliminate Obamacare altogether. I think uh, the ACA is going to stick around for a little bit. Doug Badger, a healthcare policy expert with the Conservative Heritage Foundation, says he doubts the justices will scrap the entire plan, but still wants to see Congress tackle reform. I think it is very, very expensive for taxpayers. The coverage is not what most people want. And I think there are better ways to address this. People should still sign up. Packard says she's also optimistic Obamacare is here to stay. She says Congress should pass reforms in President Biden's proposed $1.9 trillion COVID relief package to bring down costs and expand access further. In Washington, Raquel Martin, KCAU 9 News. A Sioux City resident and Iowa State Senator Jim Carlin has announced he will be running for Senate. That pits him against longtime Senator Chuck Grassley in 2022. Now, Carlin has been in the Iowa legislature since 2017 and says the main reason he has decided to run now is to protect individual freedom. Well, we've got some very serious issues. We've got some mammoth concerns with China. Um, we've got the disintegration of the family as an institution the decline of rural Iowa, and I, I believe a very real threat from big tech on free speech. But those are a couple things, but you know, the broader concern is, is freedom itself. We're also following a story out of Armstrong, Iowa tonight. The mayor, police chief, and other city officials are in hot water. They face 21 counts of both felony and misdemeanor charges. Our reporter Lydia Vasquez shares how community members are responding. That's coming up tonight on your KCAU 9 News at 10. One person is dead tonight after a crash near Remsen. Officials say it happened just before 1 in the afternoon. It was at the intersection of Highway 3 and 140 just east of Remsen. Plymouth County police say the vehicles involved were a semi-truck and a car. More information is expected to be released pending notification of family. And fire crews today battling a house fire here in Sioux City. Those flames breaking out at 612 West 6th Street, about a block away from Cook Park. That call coming in around 1120 this morning. When crews arrived, they witnessed heavy smoke coming from the attic. Crews evacuated several residents from that house before putting out the fire. Luckily, no injuries involved. Crews also battling the cold right now with temperatures well below zero. Long two or three weeks for us right now. We've been extremely busy. It's extremely hard on apparatus, equipment, and personnel. Uh, but I can't say enough about our personnel. They're, they're hanging in there and, and we're, we're pulling through it. The cause of this fire has not yet been released. Northeast Power out of Wayne, Nebraska is warning its customers tonight about power outages. But unlike during storms, these outages are actually planned. They're being called rolling blackouts and they're expected to occur in 30 minute blocks. Northeast Power serves portions of Pierce, Wayne, Dixon, Dakota, and Thurston counties. Officials say it is because of the transmission issues related to peak demands, and it's happening throughout the state. Now, Nebraska Public Power District is currently operating all available resources to meet that demand, but requests that people still conserve their power are out tonight. We still have a list of power-saving steps that homeowners can take listed on our website right now. That's, of course, SiouxLandProud.com. 
On so far what is the coldest day of the year, most Sioux City schools decided it was just too cold for students to come into class today, but that didn't stop them from learning. Instead, they had class right from their own homes over Zoom. Superintendent of Gretinger Terrell says that they might even make this a regular thing, but as of now, he doesn't plan to enforce any kind of virtual learning as a definite replacement for snow days. Instead, he said just in case, he'd like to leave a few snow days open. When we get down to the to the end of the school year, everybody starts looking towards summer a little bit, and those last few days of education aren't that great, um, just because our minds aren't wrapped around it, and so we're not losing as much there by having them uh, virtually during the year. The switch from snow days to virtual learning days would mean the ending school date would always remain the same, so there would never be extra added days to the end of the school year. A number of Nebraska school districts are planning to expand their summer school sessions. This as they offer to help students who fell behind because of COVID-19 related disruptions to their learning. In the state's largest school districts, between a quarter and one third of high school students failed two or more remote classes last semester. That failure rate is significantly higher than it was before the pandemic. And it's time tonight for our first check on the weather. Another headline this evening for all the wrong reasons. Meteorologist Marcus Beasley standing by. Marcus, so I understand we smashed a record today for low temperatures. Yeah, that's right. I'll get to that record here in the full forecast. I don't want to give it away just yet, but there was a record that was uh, destroyed earlier this morning here throughout Siouxland. Just it wasn't even close. Uh, as far as high temperatures go today, negative two in Sioux City was our high temperature, negative nine in Lamar's, negative eight in Wayne, five in Yankton, negative four in Cherokee, negative nine in Storm Lake. Forecast lows tonight. This is the low temperature. This is not a wind chill. We're going to drop down into the negative mid 20s tonight. So it is going to be extremely cold. And speaking of those wind chills, we'll see those around negative 40 degrees tonight. Windshield warning is in effect until 9 a.m. tomorrow morning, so we could break another record overnight tonight. I'll have more information on that record as well as what the rest of the week's looking like. It's going to warm up a bit more coming up in the 9 on 9 forecast. Sophie? Already looking forward to that. All right, thanks a lot, Marcus. Well, the CDC tonight has decided against mandatory COVID-19 testing before passengers take a domestic flight. The government agency had been considering this proposal for air travel within the U.S., but major airlines voiced strong objections. The CDC still recommends against travel and says if you do fly, you should get tested and quarantined for seven days. The makers of COVID-19 vaccines are figuring out how to tweak their shots just in case they need an update against some worrisome virus mutations. But changing up the formula is just one step. Harder is deciding if coronavirus has mutated enough to update the vaccines themselves. And if so, how? Flu vaccine is reformulated about every two years and authorities are looking to that system as a blueprint. Viruses always mutate, and one key step will be better tracking to target only the variants that really threaten the COVID-19 vaccine's effectiveness. Oftentimes, businesses can be struggling to fill their open job positions. Law enforcement agencies are no different. The Sioux City Police Department is having a difficult time filling two new police officer positions. It's been the case for a year now. Officer Andrew Dutler says they are competing with departments and law enforcement agencies within a 300-mile radius of Sioux City. You can learn more about this hiring challenge that the department is facing tonight and also how to apply. It's on our website right now, SiouxlandProud.com. And if you're looking for a job here in Siouxland, we do have the tools to help you out. So all you have to do is go to Sioux City Jobs. Just visit our website, SiouxlandProud.com, and click on the Jobs tab at any time. And you might not be as young and as active as you once were, but it's never too late to get into better shape. ABC's Faith Abube tells us some techniques to get your blood flowing. Are you unable to do activities you used to enjoy? Doctors at Harvard Medical School say that you can and should improve your fitness no matter your age. There are three aspects to your fitness that you should work on. One, cardiovascular or aerobic fitness. Two, strength. And three, balance and flexibility. You can do simple exercises such as walking, standing on one foot, and repeat by going from sitting to standing and lifting objects. Doctors recommend you push yourself to the point of exertion and then slowly increase intensity and weight as you get stronger over time. The biggest barrier, however, that keeps most people from moving is their noggin. Believe in yourself and start moving. It'll help you feel younger. 
If you want to get started on a fitness plan, make sure you check in with your doctor before you start exercising. With this Medical Minute, I'm Faith Abuve, ABC News. Winter weather complicates chores for many farmers here in Siouxland, but for ranchers in Texas who aren't used to Arctic temperatures, it can be even trickier. How one man is protecting his cattle tonight coming up. And overnight tonight, we'll have wind chill values 40 degrees below zero. We'll slowly warm up throughout the week, and it looks like the dry pattern for this week will continue. Details on all of that after the break. You're watching KCAU 9 News with Sophie Erber and meteorologist Marcus Beasley. This is KCAU 9 News at 5. A little bit of snow Saturday and into Sunday. And take a look at this. Next week, we could reach up above freezing. We haven't done that in quite some time. So that is definitely something to look forward to. And once we warm up above freezing, you won't be able to show us your frozen pants. This is a picture sent from a viewer in Haywarden. They uh, went outside and <laughs> froze their pants. That's, uh, that's always pretty cool to see stuff like that when it gets extremely cold. I guess that's the silver lining of these colder temperatures. If you have any pictures to show us, go to SiouxLandProud.com, click on the weather tab and drop down to send us your photos to upload to our online gallery. Very exciting. We did ask people uh, last week. We ran mm -hmm. a story. This was happening in Minneapolis, I yeah. believe. We asked them to send, and they uh, delivered. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Keep it coming. Thanks, Marcus. Valentine's Day brings with it an overflow of heartwarming stories usually, but this one is far from typical, as the couple in question is staying anonymous. How they spread love over the weekend, coming up. But first, Arctic cold gripping the country as we know. Texas seeing its lowest temps in decades. How one rancher is keeping his cattle herd safe and healthy despite the hardship next. As historic cold temperatures and wind chills continue gripping most of the country, farmers and ranchers are working to keep their livestock safe and healthy. Emily Falkenberg shows us how a Texas rancher is doing it. It's been back in the 70s and 80s when it got this cold. While most of us spent the day bundled up inside, Plainview farmer and rancher Randy Falkenberg spent long nights and early mornings breaking ice, feeding cows, and helping deliver new calves safely during one of the coldest days the South Plains has seen in nearly 40 years. I started uh, warming the tractors up at about uh, 5 30, 6 o'clock this morning so you know we can get out and start feeding by first light. The longtime farmer and rancher says the development of equipment and technology allow them to care for the herd more efficiently. And he says the drier snow actually helped keep the cows warmer. They didn't even really look that stressed this morning at four degrees because they were dry. If the cattle's got feed and water and just a little protection from the wind, cattle actually like about 32 degrees. Falkenberg says several of his cows were scheduled for a February 15th calving date. Fortunately, they don't all calve on that date, but we, we know to start watching for them because if it, during the storm, they'll usually be just a tick early. Which means most of his day was spent checking for new calves and warming up the babies as they made their entrance in the world. We try to if, pick up the calves if they're really struggling, get them in and get them dry, get them warm, just bring their core temperature back up and uh, put them back on mama as quick as possible. But Falkenberg says it's a privilege to be able to do this no matter what the weather is. That is our livelihood. Uh, it's cold and windy, but it, this is what we live for. This is, uh, it's pretty cool to get to be out and see a animal born on a zero degree day and stand up and start nursing right away. Pretty cool. Well, visiting the same restaurant around Valentine's Day is a tradition for one couple, and now they're choosing to put their money where their mouth is, literally. How they thank the staff for another perfect anniversary dinner, next. Valentine's Day is typically seen as a day of love. One couple added a bit of generosity to their celebration. Kate Cogren has their story. A server and bartender Eddie Cruz closed out a couple's tab at Bucktown's Club Lucky Friday night. He glanced down at the receipt and did a double take. My heart started racing, you know, I'm just like, you know, I'm trying to like run around and be like, oh, can I find someone? Because this is kind of unbelievable. The tip far outweighed the tab, the couple leaving 
$2,000 for the staff. They're just like, get out of here. Like, what's able? Where are they? Who are they? Turns out the husband and wife were no stranger to the 30-year-old neighborhood establishment. The message left on their receipt hinted a glimpse into their intertwined history with the place that kicked off their own love story. The owner said the generous couple who preferred to remain anonymous had their first date here at Club Lucky 20 years ago, and they've been coming back to the restaurant ever since for the past two decades. In fact, the couple comes back on the exact date and time of their first date. We have a lot of these type of guests that uh, they've, they've come in, they've started their families here. And in this case, Higgins says these guests have become like family that wanted their celebrated milestone with the restaurant to be a joy shared with all who work there. He was very specific. He wanted to make sure it was shared with all the staff. You know, it almost makes you want to, like, cry. You know, it, it's, so, it's so heartwarming and... Uh, when people are that generous. That generosity was deeply felt by the staff, not immune from the economic impacts of the pandemic. It just really put a smile on everybody's face here, and uh, we're just happy to be included in his life. Higgins says he intends to keep it that way. Since the couple's first date, he's given them an indefinite standing reservation. February 12th, 7.30, booth 46. As long as Club Lucky's here, that table will be there for him. How sweet. They are lucky. Taking a live look outside right now, Marcus returns with one more check on your forecast. Don't go away. Before we wrap up here at 5, let's check in first with Tim for what's coming up at 6. Hi, Tim. Hey, good afternoon on a Monday, Sophie. Today starts the uh, beginning of uh, Iowa Governor Kim Reynolds' mandate that school districts must offer five days a week in uh, class learning. It's a difficult day for that with the weather we've had. Des Moines area schools probably most affected by that. Of course, they had fought the governor on the whole virtual learning process. Elsewhere today, those dangerously cold conditions led to many districts calling off classes today, but that didn't necessarily mean that they, there still wasn't some school. How the quote-unquote snow day is changing thanks to a virtual learning that's coming up after World News Tonight. And this record-setting cold is hard on just about everybody, but especially livestock producers here in Siouxland. It's nearly a never-ending challenge for them. At 6, we'll check in with one family fighting the cold, trying to keep their livestock safe and marketable at the same time, keeping animals fed and watered almost impossible these days. Sophie, it's cold one. We'll have it all coming up at 6. It really is. The cold affecting everything. Thanks mm -hmm. a lot, Tim. And uh, Marcus, you have more of the same, at least for one more day to report. Yeah, it looks like tonight, negative 25 degrees for our low temperature. That could tie <laughs> or break a record. So that's something to keep, keep a watch on tonight and into tomorrow. We'll see. Thanks, Marcus. Thank you for joining us. Bundle up, and we'll see you back here at 6. Until then, good night.